What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be pretty short, sweet, and to the point. So the topic of today's video is what happens if you have some type of major mechanical failure and you're unable to fulfill your obligations to your clients. Well, it's a good idea to have a backup plan, whether you have a second vehicle that you can attach your plow to. If you're a bigger company, you probably don't even have to worry about it because you already have you know, several other trucks that you could fill in with this. But for us smaller guys, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I do. Now, I'm really good friends with a couple of local plow drivers, and it's important to be friendly with other plow drivers. I've mentioned that in earlier videos because you never know when you're gonna get stuck in the ditch, go off the side of the road, and you're gonna need a quick tow. And being friendly with these guys, you know, that's a good thing because they'll always help you out if you help them out. So with local guys in my area, we all kind of have this mutual agreement. We have each other's phone numbers and we've always agreed, hey, if our equipment goes down, if like one of our pieces of equipment goes down, then the other guys will help fill in. So if my truck were to go down, I'd have three other guys on the phone that would divide up my accounts and they would all take a little piece and I would give them most of the income. We never really have a set number, but I, I generally give them like all the income of what it'd be for that day. You know, you, you, can, you can change this however it works for you, but again, if you're a small guy, it definitely pays to be friendly with other plow drivers and implement some type of plan if you break down that they can take over your clients. So, so that's what I do, it works well for me. If I really wanted to, I can invest in a snowblower as a backup, but some of these driveways I do, man, it, it take me forever. It take me like a whole day to probably do all my driveways if I just had a snowblower, you know, so that's ineffective for me. But hey, what do you guys use? What type of backup systems do you use if, you know, your main truck goes down? Do you use other local plow guys? Let me know. Picture this. It's snowing outside. There's 14 inches on the ground already. You're trying to keep up with the storm. The weatherman's saying it's supposed to snow another six inches. But then suddenly you accidentally hit a curb and you break a pin on your plow. You're out of service until you can find a way to replace this pin. But unfortunately, because of the weather, all the stores are closed and you don't have a workshop to go you know, rummage through and find a pin. So you're pretty much screwed until you can figure out a way to get this pin. That is unless you prepare yourself for instances like that. So to start with, I like to keep a variety of tools with me. I always keep an air compressor in the back. I keep a tire plug kit. I have the means to change a tire anytime I need to. I keep a ton of hand tools in the door, various wrenches, screwdriver stuff along those lines. And behind my seat, I also carry a more in-depth tool kit. I have a set of sockets. I have some electrical wire strippers, electrical connections, spare electrical cord. So I carry a ton of basic hand tools with me in case I ever need to fix something on the fly. But what good are those tools if you can't replace the pin? So as a plow driver, it's a really smart investment to invest in an emergency parts kit specifically designed for your plow. My kit is designed for my Western HDS and it's been a little while since I've gone through it and it's a good idea to take this out once a year, familiarize yourself with what's inside so that way if anything ever breaks, you know, you'll have a good idea that you have it handy. So let's go through this kit real quick. To start with, this isn't included in the kit, but I always keep these with me. I keep a couple road flares. I can't tell you how many times I've come up on accidents on blind corners that I end up setting these up, you know, to help protect those people and make sure that they're safe. So good idea to always keep a set of road flares with you. This kit comes with a spare spring. I also have an extra electrical connection cap to keep all the wire out of there. I have an emergency chain so if my cylinder fails, I can find a way to jack up the plow and then use this emergency chain to keep it suspended so I can bring it back to a place where I can mend it. This is a must. You always got to have spare hydraulic fluid with you. Let's go through this big bag of parts. Let's see what we got here. I have an elbow kit, which this looks like it's for a hydraulic piston. It's just an elbow connecting piece. We have a ram pin kit, which is nice because each of these individual bags are labeled. We have a spare receiver pin. This one is not labeled, but this is a pretty beefy pin. Not 100% sure what that one's for. Clevis pin, 
another pin, not sure which that was for. Here we have another angled connector for like hydraulics for the uh, cylinders and hoses. Now, what do we have here? This is a motor relay. This is the type of thing that'll go bad in the middle of a snowstorm and it'll take you a while to track it down, but you'll be so happy that you have a piece like this on hand with you. Spare hydraulic hose, this is excellent to have because you never know when you may clip something and that hose may just explode. So that's always why you want to keep that spare hydraulic fluid with you. Another hydraulic fitting elbow kit. Another fairly large pin. And also a nut and bolt. Also some other things I keep included in this kit is some electrical tape, which I don't believe that came included with the kit. It's a little bag, or a little pocket on the outside of this bag, which I really like this bag. It's a nice embroidered bag. I keep a cheap little safety vest. Also in here, I carry some basic first aid. I have a much more thorough first aid kit that I keep in the truck as well, but I just have some basic band-aids that I stole out of an old uh, first aid kit. You know, band-aids, neosporin, stuff along those lines. What else do I have here? Emergency water bag. I, I guess if I ever have the need to obtain water in some type of emergency survival situation, I'm sure that would come in handy. I carry a cheap little poncho. And what the hell is this? I don't, I don't really remember putting this in here. Ah, yes. SOS. So, I don't know. You never know. I'm, I'm not really sure where I got this from, but I guess if I ever go down in the middle of nowhere and people are driving by, maybe this will uh, help me out. Uh, I don't know. Get stranded on a desert island in the middle of a snowstorm. You know, airplanes flying above overhead. Need to flag them down. Just might save your life. You never know. Some other things that I also keep handy in the truck that I always carry with me is I carry a couple toe straps. I carry ratchet straps. I have a 30 foot section of steel cable, which I got for free from work because it was getting thrown out. And I spliced loops in the end. So I can always use that as an extension off the toe straps. What else do I carry in there? I carry a couple pieces of wood, some timbering. I also carry a couple pieces of steel pipe. I torque the lugs on my truck down to the Ford recommended torque specification, which that's 150 foot pounds. And if I ever need to change a tire with the emergency tire changing kit that comes on the truck, they give you a little, um, they give you a little tire iron that's maybe a foot long. So in order to loosen up the lugs, you need to apply at least 155 pounds to loosen up these lugs. So, so what I really keep this bar for is I, I'll actually put it on the end of this little one foot tire iron and I'll use that to increase my leverage and therefore I'm able to loosen up these lugs fairly easily. So that's just something good to have. You can also use it as a baseball bat if you ever have anybody attacking you, but I doubt you'll be able to get to the back of your truck to get it by the time you have an attacker. And yeah, it, it really never hurts to keep a bunch of extra tools and miscellaneous scraps of wood because you never know when you're gonna need them. So to recap, the concept of this video is stay prepared and buy yourself an emergency kit and just keep a ton of tools with you because you never know when they're gonna come in handy.